Okay, so let us wrap up uh, this lecture with the intention that we have started out with, namely the recognition of named entities. Uh, first, uh, a definition of named entities. Named entities are definite noun phrases that refer to a specific type of individuals such as organizations, persons or dates. And with this definition in mind, we also know why we have been looking for uh, noun phrase chunks, because each named entity uh, is uh, contained in a noun phrase chunk. So if we have the noun phrase chunks, it is also easier for us to detect the named entities. So here are some commonly used named entity types. Organization uh, would contain things like uh, Georgia Pacific Corporation, WHO, uh, Amazon, Facebook, Google, etc. Persons would contain uh, Eddie Bonte, President Obama, President Trump, President Biden, Angela Merkel, etc. etc. Location would contain uh, something like Murray River, Mount Everest, Darmstadt, Frankfurt, etc. Date, that could be something like June 2008, uh, 629. Time could be something like 2.50 a.m., 1.30 p.m., uh, etc., etc. Money, percent, facility, GPE. Um, so these are, these are common uh, uh, named entities um, used in the literature. Now, the goal of na named entity recognition, also abbreviated as uh, NER, is to identify, all, to identify all textual mentions of named entities in a text document. And this has two sub-goals. The first one is to detect the boundaries. So that is, um, we could solve this by NP chunking. So uh, we, we detect, um, we detect the... Uh, we do NP chunking, but then we uh, we subcategorize. Uh, so afterwards, we would have to filter out some of the NP chunks because not all NP chunks are really named entities. But in general, we could uh, detect the boundary the the boundaries by doing some sort of bio tagging, as we've seen previously. And then the second sub goal and uh, is to identify the type. So so using some classifier. So is this um, is this chunk that we've identified, is it a person, is it a location, um, or is it a uh, organization, for example. Uh, named entity recognition is useful for information extraction, um, as is the main uh, goal of this lecture. So we want to identify, identify all companies in the text, so that, that could be relevant for our application scenario, or all, uh, all persons uh, uh, could all also be relevant for us assume that we are um, yeah assume uh, it really depends on the application if you um, um, let's say you want to uh, if you want to identify um, um, yeah you want to identify all the all the big companies in the US for example then maybe you're interested in uh, in the organization named entities also, we can do question answering with it. So, for example, if if we ask questions, let's assume we're implementing uh, a, a dialogue system, and you can and the user can put in questions um, to the dialogue system, such as who's the president of the United States, uh, and then this dialogue system would have. Uh, Let's say it would have a database that consists of, of sentences. Uh, instead of retrieving whole sentences, we could just identify the, the correct named entity at any given date. So the question is, how are we going to do it? Uh, so again, there is a simple solution. Let's say we have a word list um, where we have, um, let's say, uh, we already have stored some named entities. So we have, for example, uh, that Darmstadt is a city and Frankfurt is a city and München is a city. So let's say we, we have some, some such list and then we would just go over the text, look up each word in the text and check whether it's in our list and then say, okay, this is the specific, uh, this is the specific uh, named entity from our list with the appropriate type, such as that it's a it's a location. 
right? And we can just go over some sample text as the one here. Uh, you'll easily see that this uh, induces a lot of errors. So uh, you would start out, keep on, keep on your reading with audiobooks, and for whatever reason, on maybe a, a city in Vietnam, reading that's also uh, pronounced differently. You will recognize it as a city in the UK, namely Reading. Books apparently is also a location in Louisiana. So if you do this really naively, you will get really many, many, many errors um, and uh, like false positives, uh, which you don't want to have. So as we've seen, simple word lookup incorrectly identified uh, many words as named entities as, uh, uh, as in the previous example, which we want to avoid. <laughs> Also, if you come up with a list of people, names or organization, they will have poor coverage because new people and new organizations enter uh, continuously in the, uh, in the economic or political sphere. Named entities are furthermore ambiguous. For example, you may have something like May and North, which you would uh, initially identify as date or location, but they could also, of course, be names, right? This could also be person names. And there are multi-word expressions such as Stanford universities, and we, we've already seen quite a few of those, like uh, also like Google Incorporation or something, right? So uh, basically what we would do is there are corpora available um, with, with biotechs that also contain the named entity type. That's, for example, contained in Connell 2002. So we can just train the same classifier as we did before. And we can use even the same feature. So it's basically more or less the same problem than NP chunking from a machine learning perspective. So you can just reuse uh, your previous architecture. And the cool thing is that NLTK already provides a classifier that's recognizing named entities. Uh, and what it's doing is, um, yeah, so how it's working is you go to NLTK corpus tree bank text sentences, you, you check out one sentence uh, and uh, you're gonna see that uh, and then you can you're gonna take out one sentence and you will uh, you say NLTK any chunk and it's doing named entity chunking so it's listing you here for example in this one sentence that the US is a named entity and if so here you can set binary to true to true uh, and you, if you set binary to false, then also the class label will be assigned. And the class label is, um, so that would be a GPE entity. So I don't know at the moment what GPE uh, refers to. So this is one of those GPE uh, entities down here. It's like a, a, a regional entity, right? So it stands for region. Um, yeah. So it's a little bit counterintuitive that you have to set it to... to uh, so it's not binary, right? So if you set it to binary, it will just uh, identify the, the named entity chunks. And if you uh, omit the binary label, you'll also get the named entity type. Okay, cool. So um, basically we can do named entity recognition either using the, the built-in classifier from NLTK or using um, um, or just implementing it ourselves just as we've done with the uh, with the chunking part uh, seen in this lecture. Okay now the final thing that we just very very briefly touch upon but in the beginning we also said we don't only want to have named entities extracted from unstructured text but we also want to set them into relation with each other. So so uh, we can do some parsing, we can do some machine learning approach to do so, and there are many approaches in the literature uh, and which could be covered in a more advanced lecture. But for our purposes, what we could do, we could, uh, we could use, for example, some regular expressions, um, which I illustrate here by way of an example. <laughs> so what we, what we could do is, We first, we first um, think about all the named entities that we wanna that we wanna extract relations for, 
and then if we have the named entities um, which are of the required types let's say we're interested in all persons or in all companies or in all organizations we, we can check in the in the unstructured text whether we find triples x a y where x and y's are named entities of the required type and a is some string of words that hold that may hold between x and y so what could that be it could be like this could be a person another person and this could be a, a um, well it could be a relation of loving um, supervision x supervises y x loves y uh, x is married to y it could also be if it's two organizations it could state their relation whether one is uh, associated with the other organization if it these are two locations we can check whether x is in y right and how would we do this um, let's say we compile a regular expression uh, of the following form which is a little bit uh, a nasty looking regular expression what is it doing so it's matching uh, initially uh, anything that so that could be any kind of character then there has to be some boundaries so this slash b means boundary um, this could either be white space or it could be a bracket or something then we're gonna check for the word in uh, another boundary and then here we have another uh, regular expression which is a little bit uh, strangely looking so this this question mark uh, exclamation mark in Python that apparently means negation so we're negating the thing that's coming here and the thing that we're negating is um, uh, again a boundary and then then we match anything at least one time and then ing so we want don't want to have like something like playing uh, so we don't want to have a gerund form so this is what we're excluding so we really only want to match the in because we want to check whether one uh, location is in another location then we go over some parse documents such the such as the new york times from 1998 um, we um we extract uh, organization and location um, named entities uh, relation so we, we, we extract relations for organizations and locations in our in our document where the corpus is the corpus and the regular pattern is this regular pattern here and then we're gonna print them out um, with NLTK uh, SEM R tuple rel and what's coming out is the identified organizations and it would also be the locations uh, and whenever and there should be a an in between them and this in can be preceded by something else um, so we would have w h y y is in philadelphia or we would have mcclashan and sarail is a firm in san mateo so that's a simple approach to <coughs> relation extraction that would at least be a first step towards solving the problem would certainly be uh, erroneous in in many uh, circumstances but it's a first step and we could already um, do a little bit with this of course if we want to have it more uh, more adequately done then we would probably use uh, some machine learning techniques good so the final thing that I again as in some previous lectures want to uh, to um, to link you to is how to do chunking uh, with sta state-of-the-art techniques uh, which are in the case of natural language processing neural networks so this is the, the slide that I've shown you for the part of speech tagging where I said that the current state-of-the-art is very far away from the techniques that we have seen in in our lecture and we have said that people nowadays use recurrent neural networks uh, and in particular LSTMs to do part of speech tagging and I've also said that even this approach here with some LSTM by 2020 is um, even this is outdated by 2020 like in 2018 we could have still said that this is the state of the art now what we're gonna do if we want to do chunking basically we just change the labels 
So we go to a chunking data set, such as the Connell data set, and we replace those uh, part of speech labels with our chunking labels. Or with our, if we want to do named entity recognition, we could also replace this by bio and the named entity type. So and that's all that we have to uh, have to do. Everything else stays the same. So we use the same architecture. We use the same input representations, namely word embeddings, and we just solve another. We 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 solve another problem with this. Uh, and the, yeah, and what is cool about this is that we don't have to design two different systems. Like we don't have to design. Um, we don't have to. Do, um, specify our features for part of speech tagging and a separate set of features for chunking or for named entity recognition. But we just use one and the same thing and it's solving different tasks, which is very convenient um, and makes life much easier. So with this I conclude and I want to say that the take home message is uh, we have been doing information extraction, namely <coughs> chunking in this context, we have seen biotagging, also called IOB tagging in, uh, in some literature. We've also seen how to do named entity recognition and relation extraction. Why is this useful? Again, well, all of this useful is, um, let's say, to co-reference resolution. What is co-reference resolution? Uh, it's a task of um, matching some, uh, yeah, in most cases, actually, some kind of noun phrase, noun phrases or doubt phrase chunks with each other. So you have a, a a sequence of coherent text, such as Peter opened the door, he walked outside, and passed his book to Alice. So what we want to do is we want to relate he and Peter because they relate to the same thing. We want to uh, his book. We want also relate this somehow to Peter because it's Peter's book. So. Um, this is a very important task uh, and it's also very important for the computer to know such uh, relationships between words because in this way the computer can understand, can acquire a much deeper text understanding. <coughs> and the first step towards solving this is of course recognizing named entities and recognizing NP chunks. Secondly, what we've d done is also relevant for question answering. Uh, as we've already shown, so where is the next restaurant? So here we want to we want our computer to give out a location, for example, and we have to do named entity recognition for this also. Uh, for summarization, summarization is giving a summary. I assume you have a big input text and you want to summarize this. And of course. Um, the, the the relevant aspects is which are the important entities. So if uh, let's assume you have a big text and maybe Angela Merkel is more important than uh, some random text snippet in this text. So of course we need to identify the, the, the named entities because they they are likely very important and relevant information so you don't want to miss this. And also we can index digital libraries. For example, if uh, if we if we have a PDF document or something, or we have some scientific text document, we want to automatically extract um, the metadata, such the author, the title, the publication date. Uh, to make structured information out of unstructured information and for author title publication date that is that also looks like a NP chunking or respectively named entity recognition task so this would also be useful uh, for such kind of purposes so here are some uh, links how to train NLP chunkers how to do um, chunk extraction with NLTK NLTK classifier based chunkier accuracy, how well it's performing, and some other resources, for, for example, the Stanford named entity tagger, which is better than, the, than what uh, NLTK is offering you, and also some style book for chunking. Uh, what you want to do, what you can do for preparing for next week is um, trying out the code from, our, uh, from the current lecture. 
uh, recapitulate the slides that we've done and you can uh, you can go ahead and read chapter number eight